Welcome back to another Teach Review lesson. We are going to look at the reproductive system today. Now, um, the teach questions, at least for the ones that I have seen, uh, and also the information from the study manual, seem to suggest that the questions are going to be kind of more focused on the specific parts and their associated functions. Um, another kind of focus is going to be uh, the, some of the hormones that are involved in the system. So I have seen some questions on, uh, you know, the, the male and the female sex hormones and what they do, how they contribute to the functions of the reproductive system. So that's what we're going to focus on today. Now, a quick overview. Uh, the, reproduct the reproductive system is, of course, going to be different between males and females, right? But the overall goal is kind of very, very similar. The goal is to produce a gamete. Now, you probably remember this term from a previous lesson. So gametes uh, basically just mean sex cells, right? So in males, that's going to be sperm. And in female, that's going to be egg. So those are called gametes. Another goal for the uh, reproductive system is to produce sex hormones, sex hormones. And this is kind of really related to the endocrine system, right? Because the sex hormones are hormones, so they're also part of the endocrine system. And we are going to kind of go over a few important sex hormones today. All right. Now let's look at the male reproductive system first. So I found this diagram from online without any labels, but it's okay. Uh, we can kind of label them as we go. And this is actually a good um, exercise. You can you know, find a, a diagram without labels from online, and then you can try to uh, label the different structures. All right, now we are going to start with the testes. Usually there are two testes in each male, uh, and the, the main function is to produce sperm and also male sex hormone. Uh, the main one is testosterone. If you uh, see a question, it says, where is testosterone produced? Or where is the male sex hormone produced? The answer will be testes. So, you know, testes and ovaries, so ovaries are the counterpart in females. So those are usually you know, the more important organs in the reproductive system because they make the gametes, they also make the sex hormones. So these are going to be the testes, all right? Scrotum, so scrotum is kind of like a sack that houses the testes. Uh, so there will be a sack and that's going to be the scrotum. Now you may know that the uh, testes, which are inside the scrotum, uh, are outside the male's body. And that's because our normal body temperature, which is 37 degrees Celsius, will be sure it's a little bit too high for sperm development. So that's why for mammals, the testes are usually outside the body cavity so that uh, it can maintain a slightly lower temperature. The uh, ideal temperature for sperm development is around 34 degrees C. So you can see that's lower than the normal body temperature, right? So that's why uh, the testes are found outside the body cavity, uh, usually housed in the scrotum. The next structure is epididymis. So that's the epididymis. Now that's kind of where the uh, sperm is temporarily stored. Um, and also that's where sperm stays to mature. Right? Uh, a lot of structures seem to have to go through that maturation process. Remember in the immune system, we talk about B cells and T cells, and they have different locations to mature, right? Uh, it's kind of similar for the sperm. Right? The sperm also have to kind of uh, go through a process where they become the mature sperm cells. So that's epididymis. Uh, we're also kind of following the pathway for sperm, right? So sperm um, cells are initially produced in the testes, and then they move on to epididymis to mature, uh, also a temporary storage site. And then the sperm is going to go through this duct. It's going to travel through this duct called ductus deferens or vas deferens. All right, so it transports sperm. Next structure 
is seminal vesicle. Now, before actually, before I talk about this structure, okay, before I talk about the next structure, I kind of want to finish this pathway uh, of sperm traveling. So after the ductus deferens over here, so that's ductus deferens, there's an ejaculatory duct over here, and then the sperm is going to go through urethra. Urethra, remember, uh, we talk about urethra in the urinary system. So in males, urethra goes through penis, and urethra uh, transports both urine and sperm, and this is why. Okay, next structure is a seminal vesicle. Now, this seminal vesicle is a kind of accessory organ. So the seminal vesicles are over here. Usually there's a pair. So the seminal vesicle secretes, secretes a part of the semen. It secretes a fluid that's part of the semen fluid, that's part of the seminal fluid. Uh, I don't think you need to know the details about what's in the fluid secreted by what gland. So when you look at the seminal fluid, it's actually contributed by three different types of glands. The, the seminal vesicle, the prostate, and the bulbo urethra gland. So all of these three glands contribute to semen, which contains both the seminal fluid and the sperm. So that's kind of what um, each gland secretes, what they contribute to the seminal fluid. But like I said, I don't think T's will, you know, T's questions will go into that much detail and kind of ask you about what exactly is in the secretion of each gland. So I don't think you need to memorize all the um, details, but just know that the seminal fluid uh, is secreted or is contributed by all these glands and the main goal is to nourish the sperm, to um, activate the sperm, and also, you know, neutralize the, the acidity from the, um, the urine and also the acidity in the vagina, in the vaginal canal where the sperm have to go through, right, to try to get to the egg and fertilize the egg. All right, the last structure is the penis, right, right here. So the penis is, you know, the main function is to deliver sperm. Okay, um, those are the male structures. And now let's look at the female structures. Uh, the counterpart for testes is ovary, right? Again, usually a female has a pair of ovaries. So they are this kind of whitish structure right here. Again, they're kind of like a bean shaped structures. In the ovaries produce eggs and also female sex hormones such as estrogen and also progesterone is produced by empty follicles in the ovaries so we can add a progesterone here as well all right now the ovaries are going to uh, release eggs usually one egg per month and then the egg will be swept into this tube called uterine tube or the fallopian tube. The fallopian tube. Fallopian tube is what's used in T's study, uh, study uh, manuals. So you might want to be familiar with this uh, particular term. So this is the fallopian tube. And you can see once the egg is released by the ovary and it reaches uh, and it gets into the fallopian tube, it's going to travel down the fallopian tube. Okay, now there's a very important piece of information about the fallopian tube is that it's the site for fertilization. Okay, so let's say now this picture is a little bit small, so I'm going to draw something over here. So let's say you have the ovary here, right? And then this is the fallopian tube. So the egg is going to enter the fallopian tube, and as it travels along the fallopian tube, that's usually when it encounters a sperm cell. So the sperm will get in here. So once they meet, right, the sperm can fertilize the egg. So remember, the fertilization does not happen in the uterus. No, that's not in the uterus. It happens usually in the fallopian tube. And then you have a fertilized egg. Okay, so I'm just going to put F in there to indicate that's the fertilized egg. And then the fertilized egg will be swept 
toward the uterus, okay? So that's when the egg is going to try to reach the uterus because that's where the fertilized egg is going to implant, right? And then eventually it's going to develop into a fetus. Now, the fertilized egg cannot stay in the fallopian tube because the fallopian tube has, it doesn't have a very strong wall. It cannot house the developing embryo eventually fetus. Only uterus can do that because uterus uh, has very thick wall, strong enough to, um, to hold the, the embryo and eventually the fetus. So if the fertilized egg somehow gets stuck in the fallopian tube, as it grows, it's going to rupture the fallopian tube, which could be a very serious situation. So the egg, the fertilized egg, has to reach the uh, uterus and implant in the uterus to uh, develop further. Okay, all right. Now, uterus, we already mentioned uterus, that's going to be where um, the fertilized egg travels to, right, and then implants and then develop. Cervix is the opening of the uterus, and the cervix can secrete mucus. Right? You probably have uh, heard of the mucus plug, right? That's a uh, thick kind of layer of mucus secreted by cervix. Uh, every month, actually, in response to hormones to the menstrual cycle, cervix secretes mucus plug to close the uh, uterus so that no sperm can enter and also no pathogen can, can get into the uterus. So it's kind of like a protection mechanism as well. So that's the cervix, and then you probably have heard of the cervical cancer, right? That happens in the cervix. Vagina, uh, that's really kind of a place to receive sperm, right? And then the sperm can travel up. So the sperm can travel up through the vagina, through the uterus, and get into each of the fallopian tubes. Last, let's look at the relationship between the reproductive system and the endocrine system. Um, we haven't talked about the endocrine system yet, but just bear with me. We're going to mention some terms, and when we get to the endocrine system, you're going to go over them again, so that's going to help you kind of remember their function. Now, in males, uh, well, actually, for both the sexes, we will have luteinizing hormone, which is LH, and the follicle-stimulating hormone, which is FSH. So the LH will promote the testes to make more testosterone, the main male sex hormone and the fsh and testosterone together they will stimulate stimulate spermatogenesis uh, spermatogenesis really just means sperm production sperm production there you go and testosterone again the male sex hormone is responsible for the development of male secondary sex characteristics during puberty and also sex drive. All right. Now, in females, of course, you're gonna have, uh, of course, you're gonna see the the influence of LH and FSH. So, luteinizing hormone is going to stimulate ovulation, where the egg is released each month. Usually, uh, each, uh, usually females release one egg per month, but it could be more. And that's why you have, you know, twins or you know, triplets. Progesterone, that's uh, one of the female sex hormones, is produced by empty follicles called the corpus luteum. Now, so, so in the ovaries, you have these follicles, right? This follicle. And these follicles um, will have eggs in them. They're called oocytes, oocytes. Now, as these follicles develop, eventually they will become the mature follicle that can release an egg, right? Which is kind of stimulated by the luteinizing hormone. So once the egg is released, you know, you only have this empty follicle and it's called the corpus luteum. Corpus luteum produces progesterone. And progesterone is um, very important in terms of the menstrual cycle. Progesterone signals the endometrium, which is the innermost lining of the uterine wall. Uh, right here, endometrium. So endo means inside, right? So that's the innermost layer of the uterine wall. And the progesterone is going to tell endometrium that, oh, you may get um, 
uh, fertilize the egg to implement and develop in the uterus. So in response to that, the uh, endometrium is going to thicken, going to get thicker, and there will be kind of blood uh, vessels developing, you know, in preparation for uh, the implementation of a fertilized egg. But if implement implementation does not occur, then the endometrium is going to shed. So that's uh, what's commonly known as the period. All right, now another main female sex hormone is estrogen. That's probably something that people are more aware of, especially if you're taking birth control pills. It has estradiol, which is the main type of estrogen. So the estrogen is responsible for the development. Oops, I'm missing FE. So that's going to be female sex, secondary sex characteristics, right? Such as development of the breast and also some kind of uh, fat distribution in the body and also some changes in the pelvis. Okay, so that's the uh, main hormones that are involved in female and the male reproductive system. All right, let's look at some practice problem. Again, if you need some time to think about the question, just pause the video before I reveal the answer. Number one, which of the following organs produces sperm? So the answer is testes, right? What if I change this to eggs? That's going to be ovary. Number two, which of the following connects the ovaries and the uterus? So what's the structure between the ovary, right, and the uterus? There is a tube in between. So the correct answer is fallopian tube, right, fallopian tube. Number three, in which of the following organs is estrogen, estrogen primarily made? So who makes estrogen? That's a female sex hormone, right? So it's produced by ovaries. So ovaries makes kind of two groups of things. First one is eggs. Ovaries makes egg. Ovaries make egg. Ovaries also makes uh, female sex hormone. Okay, such as estrogen and progesterone. Number four, which of the following is the tube that carries both the sperm and urine for release outside the body? So it transports both sperm and urine and goes through the penis. So that's urethra. Number five, which of the following structures is responsible for egg production? Correct answer is ovary. All right, good job, guys. You just completed the reproductive system. Now we are getting very, very close to the end of anatomy and physiology. We have one more lesson left on endocrine system, and then we'll move on to the physical and life sciences. Uh, that will be the second part of the peace science review. Again, uh, let me know if you have any questions. If you think the video is helpful, subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up. Uh, a comment let me know if you have any uh, suggestions uh, topics that you want me to discuss all right good job guys